Hello everyone and welcome back to Nine Inch Charge. We are doing a, another magic video today and today we are going to stand in Teclis's place. He may not be in the game but High Magic is back and we are here to talk you through it. As always we're going to start with the signature spell and this for me is one of the best signature spells in the game hands down. So let's jump straight into it. It is Drain Magic. Drain Magic is a hex with a casting value of 9 plus and a range of self. It remains in play. Whilst the spell is in play, enemy wizards that are within 24 inches of the caster's model when attempting to cast a spell must increase that spell's casting value by 2. You used this spell on me once and it was so frustrating, Dan. It shut down my... Because we were only playing with level 2s. It shut down my magic phase until I could dispel it. Yeah, and um, I do remember that you couldn't dispel it on the first attempt. So it, it rolled on, didn't it? You know, yeah, a couple of turns. Took, yeah, it took me a good two or three turns to get rid of it. Um, it's 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 brilliant because it gives the high elves and other races that can take this magic that that supremacy of magic where it feels like. You know they can overwhelm you with their with their magical abilities. Um, it's it's a really brilliant debuff, especially as magic is is in every phase of the game. It's got a mm. really good range. I suppose the fear is that you would the enemy mage would be over twenty four inches away, and then it wouldn't matter. So you really have to push your mage up the center of the table to maximize it. Um, <clears> I also want to say, I guess, as a wood elf player, um, this couples really well with some other items. So. Um, there are other items that you can take in the Wood Elf list that give you bonuses to cast. So you roll three dice and pick the two highest, or bonus to dis to dispel where you roll three dice and pick the two highest. Mm. So then your control of magic kind of magnifies even further, and you can begin to create a force that really dominates the magic phase. Um, and you can always take the spell. Yeah. You don't have to roll it up. You can pick it. Um, so, yeah. I don't think there's many spells out that that have a greater range than 24. That, like, if someone's so far 24 inches away, I don't think it matters really what spells are casting on themselves. Mm, yeah. So, so as, soon, as soon as they move in and start trying to fire off a magic missile at you, sorry, too close now. <laughs> well, yeah, you've been on the receiving end of it, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'd take that spell if I was running high. So let's prepare to get into the lore itself. And the first spell is Walk Between Worlds. This is a conveyance spell with a casting value of 10 plus and a range of self. Until your next start of turn subphase, the caster and any unit they have joined gain the ethereal and reserve move special rules. That's really good. Like having ethereal means no one can hit you. Unless you've got a magical weapon. Yeah. And you can cast this in combat because it's ranged self. So you can charge in with your unit of white lions, sword masters, or what have you. Make yourself ethereal. And just murder everything in front of you. Can you cast a ranged self spell in combat? Yeah. It's one of the only ones. So if it's ranged self, or it states that you can cast it in combat, you can cast it in combat. Oh, so you can do this after you've done all your charging in as well. Oh, that is nasty, isn't it? Yeah. Or if you fumbled your charge, you can just cast this on yourself as an emergency. It's just good to cast in any phase of the game because you think you're going to be the target of shooting. For example, you want to become ethereal, so you you know you you negate that. And reserve move means that you can move at the end of the shooting phase as long as you haven't fled or marched or anything like that. Or charged. Um, or charged. I think it's you know for units that have moved and then shot and then they can move again. Um, yeah. So you can kind of get that march. I don't know that it's 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 wholly beneficial for the kind of unit you're going to want to cast this on and put your wizard in. Um, I think really you're taking this to become ethereal. And what you said about self being a range you can cast in combat makes that incredible yeah really strong i love that all right next um this is my favorite spell in the law is fiery convocation at the high mage's bidding 
A rolling storm of fire erupts within the midst of the enemy line. It's a magic missile. It has a casting value of 10 and a range of 18, so a very good range. Place the five-inch large blast template so that its central hole is directly over the center of the target enemy unit. Once placed, the template will scatter D3 plus one inches. Any enemy model whose base lies underneath the template's final position risks being hit, as described on page 95, and suffering a strength four hit with an AP of minus two. These hits have the flaming attack special call. So you just fire off like a little explosion, basically. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, how many people does it hit? Like, roughly, do you reckon? Under a five-inch blast is a lot, but it's but it scatters. Um, yeah. I guess the other thing to consider is, um, I was looking um, only earlier today um, with Mark about the Hail of Doom arrow and, and how many people get hit on the three inch template and and it can hit you know all three ranks but i guess my wonder is now is are people going to take units in all three ranks are you just going to have like two ranks and stretch them out so the template weapons are probably this is probably a discussion for a different video but they they might be less Effect less, yeah, less effective than you think because people aren't going to take their units in a perfect square that your template can line up to, they're going to string them out a bit more. So, yeah. actually, you're only going to go along that line. So, um, yeah, like if anyone doesn't know, there's a lot of talk around line hammer going on, so it could might not be as effective as you think, but it sounds cool. You tried to cast just, it on me, and hmm. I don't think you got it off. No. Um, I, I just like the idea that you cast the magic missile when it lands, you get like the mushroom cloud and the small explosion yeah. just like goes off. Um, so, but it's very powerful. They all take a strength for risk taking a strength for hit with an AP of minus two. Um, and fighting your Bretonian knights, that tells me that I want to take that. Oh, yeah. If you drop that in the middle of the lance, then I could have a bad day. Yeah. Um, all right, um, next is Tempest. This is a magical vortex with a casting value of 9 plus and a range of 12 inches. It remains in play. Place a small 3-inch blast template so that the center hole is within 12 inches of the caster. Whilst in play, the template does not move and is treated as dangerous terrain. Whilst within 6 inches of the template, enemy units treat open ground as difficult terrain and difficult terrain as dangerous terrain. I like it. Again, controlling movement yeah. in a game where controlling movement's king. That's quite cool. Yeah, and what's nice about it is that it doesn't scatter off. So a lot of these things, you put it down somewhere where you think, I really need it in that position. And then it moves. Mm. Whereas this remains in play, it stays where it is. So you can plan and you think, right, this is the line that, you know, they're going to be coming down or, or what have you. You know, maybe there's a bit of impassable terrain and then you can put it next to that. Um, and and that will really begin to help you out. Yeah, uh, control the movement phase, um, really good. Yeah. And potentially cause, cause a wound or two if you can make something dangerous terrain. <clears throat> Absolutely. So you could extend a forest by three inches, essentially. Mm. And have some enemy cavalry charge through it, which would be quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, next is Corporeal Unmaking. This is an assailment spell, the casting value of 8 plus, and its range is combat. A single enemy unit the caster is engaged in combat with suffers D3 strength 5 hits with no armor or regeneration saves permitted. Ward saves can be attempted as normal. Um, that's quite good against some of the bigger hitty heroes we've seen that might be tempted to fly around on their own gribbly little mount they've got. Mm. Yeah, um, and it's nice, you know, we're going to see a lot of Tomb Kings, aren't we? And they will have regen, so yeah, that's good for that as well. I think it's one not to get too overexcited about because it's only D3 hits, so, you know, you've got the potential there. One in three times, you're just going to do one hit of strength five. Um, it's great that it's no armor saves and no regens, but I think it's nothing really to write home about. I mean, it's worth mm. casting. All these 
all these assailment spells are worth casting because they will do increased damage and they will help you out. But I just don't think this is going to be, you know, devastating, is it? I, you say that, like, if you pick, pick the right target, a Grail Knight's like 20 points. So if you if you get D3 of those off against Grail Knights, then suddenly mm. you've made your points back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, next is Fury of Cain. This is an enchantment with a casting value of 9 plus and a range of 12 inches. Until the end of this turn, the target friendly unit gains extra attacks plus one special rule. This spell may target a friendly unit engaged in combat. I I love that. It's very good on the that. elite elven infantry, I think. Yeah. I use sword masters because I've used them in a game and they were really good when I used them. And if they got extra an extra attack, I'd have been laughing. I think in a game where now you don't get extra you know you don't fight in an extra rank like you used to in eighth edition you don't make those supporting attacks getting extra attacks out of your front rank is is really important um and also because this is high magic and it's you know it's going to be taken by elves you're going to have the initiative that you're going to see the benefit of it i think one of the things is if another army is taking it um potentially you know you would cast this spell but you won't have the initiative to carry it off it doesn't matter that you've got plus one attack because your front rank is going to get wiped anyway um so i think this is really useful high magic in a high elf army yeah and finally the last spell is shield of suffering this is an enchantment spell of the casting value of nine plus and a range of 18 inches until the end of this turn the target friendly unit gains a five plus ward save against any wounds suffered if this spell is cast the effects of any other enchantment previously cast on the target unit immediately expire. Um, so first of all, I just want to say, cast this first, then cast Fury of Cain, because then you can still get them both off. But if you cast it the other way around, it doesn't work. I don't know why that is. Um, it seems to me that probably the intention is that you can't have any enchantment except this, but you can because of the wording. Um, yeah. So there's there's quite a few of these about, aren't they, uh, that give units five plus four saves. I think this is the third one that we've seen now in this series. Um, yep. It gives the unit a five plus four save. Um, it's cast a bit easier um, than the Earth and Round parts. Yeah, um, a little bit harder than Oaken Shield. But it's it's better than Oaken Shield because you can it, do it from inch range. Yeah, it doesn't have to be yeah. your own unit. You can pick a unit within 18 inches. Um, the only other thing to say, though, is that this can't be cast into combat, whereas Oaken Shield is a range of self, mm -hmm. um, so can. Um, so you need to set this up before you get into combat, and then when you're locked into combat, in subsequent turns, you won't be able to cast it. But a 5 plus ward save is still brilliant. Um, and it will really help you out in any phase that you can cast it because it will defend you against shooting, it defend you against combat later in the turn, especially if you know you're going to be in combat. So, Tom, the Law Familiar is out and about. What four spells are you picking to take onto the battlefield with today? I'm taking the signature for show. Yeah. That's easy money. Um... The rest of them aren't so because they're all really they're all really good. Fury of Cain. Yeah. Walk, plus one attack. Walk between between worlds because I think it would just be hilarious to make a unit of like white lions ethereal. <laughs> yeah. And then Corporeal one making potentially. Just because it's probably one of the more straightforward ones to use. Hmm. And sometimes I just can't be bothered to think too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an easy D3 strength 5 that I think will come in clutch. Hmm. How about you, Daniel? Definitely taking the signature, getting the control of that magic. 
Um, and I am going to also take, it's quite it's quite a difficult choice because they're all good, they're all useful. Um, I'm going to take, walk between worlds um, to make a unit ethereal. I think <laughs> that that uh, casting value of 10 plus is better than Shield of Saffron giving you a five plus war save because not a lot is going to be able to attack you at all. Um, so I'm definitely taking that those two um mm -hmm. i want to take fiery convocation because i think it scares people um and i want to be causing big explosions on the battlefield and my last spell mm, i think i'm gonna take fury of cain because I want to be doing that extra combat damage. Especially if I'm an elf, I'm going to attack first. So I think that it will come in more handy than Shield of Safari. So those are my four. But difficult choice. The most difficult has been so far because they're all good and have their own yeah. uses. There isn't really one in there that I'm thinking, no, nah, I'm not taking that. Um, maybe for me, corporeal I'm making because I just know that I would just roll one hit every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think if you've got that so your wood elves could take high magic, correct? Or yeah. do you think your wild riders combined with Walk Between Worlds Fury of Cain? Like I'm tempt I'd be tempted to throw them into the middle of like right at the front of someone's combat. Charge them straight yeah. down the center at something. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be a fantastic law to use on elves and you know there's a reason why i took it when i mm. when i played when i played against you tom is um is i think it's got a lot of utility to it i think i still think i think it's a better law than illusion oh sorry than elementalism but elementalism suits my play style a bit more um yeah so i'll have to wait and see what i choose personally but i don't think any army that can take this will go wrong with it that's no. why i took it I think it's only the mere mortals who can take elementalism as well. Us, the higher borns, <laughs> you know, they can have high magic. I'm not allowed it on my lances, unfortunately. Um, thank you very much for watching this episode about high magic. We will be back next time where we will be discussing the art of illusion. <laughs> so make sure to like and subscribe uh, if you've enjoyed and you want to see more. And we will catch you next time.